Today I'm going to be showing you how to install your ShareCenter NAS. Now in this example we're going to be using the DNS 325. However, if you have a different model such as the DNS 320, the 320L, or the DNS 345, the setup steps are exactly the same. Now the first thing I'm going to show you is how to install your NAS into your network. So the first thing you want to do is install your hard drives. Now, depending on the NAS that you have, the drives will either be installed in the front of the unit or on the top. Now, again, in the example of the DNS 325, we're going to be installing them in the front. So you just slide the front panel up, the panel comes off, and you slide in your new hard drives. The next thing you want to do is plug in the power to your NAS. Connect it to your network and then go ahead and power on the device. Now, depending on the NAS that you have, you may need to hold down the power button for two or three seconds for it to power on. From there, the hardware is now installed. Now we want to move over to a computer. All right, now that we're at a computer, the next thing we want to do is now run the setup wizard for the NAS. Now, the setup wizard comes on the setup CD that comes with the NAS. If you don't have the CD anymore, you can also download this from the support website. Now, that's what I'm going to do in this example. So I'm going to open up my web browser. And up in the address bar, I'm going to go to support.dlink.ca. All right, now from the support site, right in the search box here, you just want to go ahead and enter in the model number of your NAS. So again, in this example, I'm using the DNS 325. So I'm just going to enter that in here and click search. I'm going to select my NAS. And then from the downloads tab, I'm going to select the setup wizard. All right, now when you're saving the file, you're best to save it to somewhere that you can easily find it. So in this example, I'm going to be saving it to my desktop. All right, now that the setup wizard has completed downloading, I'm just going to go ahead and close my web browser. And on my desktop here, I now have my setup wizard. I'm just going to double click on it. Go into the setup wizard folder and then I'm going to launch the setup wizard.exe. All right, once you do that, the setup wizard should come up and it will present you with a wizard. Now you might get a Windows firewall pop up come up. You want to make sure you allow access at this point. If you don't allow access, the software is not going to be able to find your NAS on the network. So again, you want to make sure you click on allow access. And then from there, you just want to click on the start button to start the wizard. All right, now the first few steps here are to actually install the NAS and insert your hard drives, which we've already done. So we're just going to click on next. Now the software should automatically pick up your NAS on your network. If not, just go ahead and click on the refresh button and it should come up. Now by clicking the refresh and it still doesn't come up, again, you want to just double check your connections, make sure that the NAS is properly connected to your router, and also make sure that you don't have any firewalls running that could potentially be blocking the communication from the software to the NAS. But if it does come up, you just want to select the NAS, so you just click on it. Once you click on it, you'll notice that the light on the front of the NAS should start blinking. If it is, just go ahead and click yes. And from there, it's going to ask you for the admin password for your NAS. Now, by default, there is no password, so you just want to leave it blank and then click Next. And then the next step it's going to get you to do is actually set a password for the NAS. Now, this password is going to be used to log into the NAS to make any configuration changes and setting changes. So the password has to be a minimum of five characters. So you just want to go ahead and enter in a password and then click Next. The next step is to configure the IP address for the NAS. In most cases, you just want to keep it on the DHCP client. 
However, if you do want to set a static IP, you can go ahead and do that also. We're going to keep it on DHCP client and then just click next. The next step is to configure the name and description for the NAS. I'm just going to leave it at the default settings and click next. All right, next it's going to ask you if you want to set up a dynamic DNS account. In this example, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to select no, I do not have an account and no, I do not want to apply for one. From there, I'm going to go ahead and configure the time for the NAS. So I'm going to select my time zone. All right, and I'm going to set the time based on my computer clock. So I'm just going to click here, set time for my computer, and I'm going to click next. Next step in the wizard is to configure the email settings. Now, this is useful if you want the NAS to send you an email if your drives become full or if a drive fails. Again, in this example, I'm going to be skipping this step. So I'm just going to click on the skip button. And then comes the time to actually configure the hard drives. So I'm going to click next. It's going to show you the hard drives that you currently have installed in the NAS. So I have two one terabyte drives and it's going to ask you to select what type of file system you want to configure. So we have a couple options here. We have standard JBOD, RAID 0 and RAID 1. Now in this example, I'm going to configure it in JBOD. So I'm just going to select JBOD and then click next. It's then going to ask you to select the drive letter to map the drive to once the setup is complete. I'm going to leave it on the X drive. However, you can select any drive letter that you like that's available to you. And then go ahead and click next. Now the last step here is just a configuration summary. Once you've confirmed your settings, just go ahead and click next. Now this is a very important note. Please note that once the drives start formatting, all of the data on the drives will be erased. So if you are okay with that, go ahead and click yes. Unfortunately, there is no coming back from this. You will lose all data on the drives. So again, once you've confirmed this, go ahead and click yes. And the drive should start formatting. Now, depending on the size of the drives that you have installed, this may take a few minutes to complete. Now that the format is complete, you just want to click next. Now, depending on the NAS that you have, it may ask you to install some add-on packages. Now, this step is fully optional. You can select whatever which ones that you would like. If you're not going to be using any of them, you can just go ahead and uncheck them. However, if you do want to learn more about what these are, please check out our website at support.dlink.ca. So again, I'm just going to leave it at the defaults here. I'll have it install these. Click on next. And then we'll just have to wait a few moments for it to install these packages. All right, now that the add-ons have been installed, again, I'm just going to click next. Going to click next again. And then that's it. Your setup is complete. So from there, again, you, you can just confirm your settings that you have there. And we're just going to click on finish. And the setup wizard will close. Now, if you remember previously in the setup wizard, we specified drive X as the drive letter for the NAS. Now to access that, you just want to bring up computer. So clicking on the start menu, click on computer and you'll see your drive letter again in this example it was drive x and inside here is where i can put any files or folders that i'd like for more helpful videos please check out support.dlink.ca